Mm -hmm. Hello and welcome to another JavaScript SEO office hours. Um, it's me, Martin Schmidt from the Google Search Relations team, and uh, I'm here to answer your questions on JavaScript SEO. And a few questions were already submitted, so I'll go to the submitted ones, and then we'll take questions from the audience. If you want to join these live Hangouts, uh, you can go to google.com slash webmaster slash connect. We have a calendar where they are scheduled, or you go to youtube.com slash webmaster slash community, and uh, I'll post the link to these recordings a few minutes before the recording start, so you can join them live. Or you can just use the YouTube post to uh, post your questions and then see you at the answer later um, as the recording goes up. Cool. So let's have a look. What was uh, asked? And the thing is, if you ask questions that are not related to JavaScript, I would ask those in the regular um, SEO office hours or the webmaster office hours, because this is specifically aimed uh, towards JavaScript questions and problems. Right. So is it fine that we serve the content pages without any JavaScript for bots? Is that considered cloaking? No. Um, if it is the same content or roughly the same content, um, it doesn't matter if, if there is JavaScript or not. And if it's slightly different, that is what we would call dynamic rendering. We have a guide on dynamic rendering as well. And um, that's perfectly fine. That's not a problem. Does it help to decrease the time to download and increase the number of pages Google Googlebot can crawl within the same budget? Maybe, maybe not. Um, that it depends on many different factors. If so, like dynamic rendering, usually when you render the page without JavaScript, um, as the request comes in, it usually takes longer because you have this extra rendering step in the middle of it. So that sometimes makes the site a little slower, but that's normally neglectable and not a big problem. Um, again, it depends on your your setup. You should measure that uh, time. Um, it might save you a few requests in crawl budget uh, if your JavaScript is client-side rendered and does like a bunch of API requests to actually fetch resources and then create the content from that. You would save these requests, and that means that you get uh, a little more requests in your in your uh, crawl budget. But then again, crawl budget is only relevant if you have like a really large site with, I would say, like a million and up um, pages and. Uh, there's other factors that go into crawl budget, so you might not see an increase in uh, pages being indexed, but you might. It's not impossible. OK. Hi, Martin. Is the client-side JavaScript redirect treated like a 301 and immediately considered permanent like a 302 temporarily or something else? Um, it's considered like a redirect. We don't really make that much of a difference in terms of 301 and 302. It does have a different. Uh, outcome for the users. 301s, uh, browsers cache that and immediately jump to the target destination, whereas um, with 302, it basically jumps uh, to that uh, original URL first and then jumps to the to the target. Um, Client-side redirects for browsers are pretty much like 302s. So if you can avoid them, I would. If you cannot, then that's OK, too. So it doesn't really hurt anything much. So you don't have to worry about that big time. Uh, someone wants to join the session but doesn't have the link, so I'll just quickly post the link here as well. We rebuilt our website in React and implemented a mobile navigation from one of the component frameworks, which is not in the DOM until a user clicks on the hamburger icon. Could that have a negative on, uh, effect on how Googlebot sees our page? None of the links are visible in the HTML. Um, you kind of answer your question yourself. If it's not in the HTML, we're not going to see it. That's that's what's going to happen. And if this is your navigation, and your navigation is the only thing that tells us about your page structure, that's not great. I would argue that it's always better to have uh, the links in the HTML, in the DOM, uh, maybe hide it, maybe move it out of the screen, whatever, but don't just remove it entirely. You, you can totally have something that is invisible in the DOM uh, and only comes in on user interaction, we wouldn't do the user interaction. But as long as it's in the DOM, we would see the links. Whereas if you really just need a user interaction uh, for the links to be injected into the Java, uh, into the DOM, then that's what we are not seeing. So that's not great. Is there a difference in how Google handles history push state versus history replace state? Good question. I don't know. I think there isn't. 
but I don't know for sure, and I would have to test. You can probably test that as well. Uh, I'm not 100% sure, I guess. Um, I would assume that there isn't a big difference, but I am really, really not sure. And uh, I'm not sure if we would count replace state as a redirect. But um, I would have to check. That's a really good question. Ooh, I like hard questions. I'll come back with an answer maybe on Twitter. <laughs> I'll see. <laughs> Thanks, Marty. Sorry for that. Um, since the bot should not really care about custom web fonts, is it OK to serve the bot a page that loads fast and does not rely on the custom fonts? Um, could that have a positive effect? Uh, I wouldn't do it. Yes, it could have a possible, uh, potentially positive effect, but it also means that you have a more complicated setup because you then have to inherently figure out is this a bot or not, and then have additional code that deals with this. Additional code usually also means additional bugs. No matter what you do, like there will be weird side effects that you might not have foreseen. I just wouldn't do something for such a minuscule improvement. Um, a better way of dealing with this is to either prevent us from loading the web fonts, like put the web fonts somewhere where you can robot them away so that we can't fetch them. If you really care about this like mu of performance um, and set your CSS to fonts so that they swap in uh, default fonts and, and don't have the flash of uh, unstyled text up front. Um, but honestly, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I, this sounds like something isn't broken and you just want to like tickle these last few seconds out there. Don't. Uh, the complexity that you incur is higher than the benefit that you poten potentially gain. So I would not do that. As mentioned in the JavaScript SEO basics article, yay, someone's reading my documentation. That's great. Using meaningful HTTP status codes can be impossible for SPAs with client-side routing. Yeah. The article goes on to suggest using a redirect to a server-rendered URL for this purpose. The solution seems like an overkill for a 404 page. No, it's it, no, that's not. Because you should be able to configure your server so you can set it to a 404 um, status code for some URL, and then you just redirect to that URL. I don't see why that's hard. That's like, I think in, in Express.js, there's like five lines of code, including this, the client side part. Um, does Google really not recognize Soft 404 at this day and age? Maybe you can shed some light. We do. We do. Uh, if we think that it's a Soft 404, uh, we do usually flag that. But it's such a bad idea, and it's so easy to prevent. Uh, if you don't want to do the overkill, then just no index the page that is a 404. That's also cool. That's one line. That's why I have these both examples in there. Um, we do recognize soft 404s normally, but the, there is a risk, and there will always be a risk, because what we're doing is our machine has to guess where there is a mechanism where there are three mechanisms where we wouldn't have to guess. The 404 as a server-side response, which is not available in the client-side rendered and client-side routed application. I understand that. Um, that's one way of, of not having us guess and actually having us um, know that this is a 404. The no index, where we don't know it's the 404, but we wouldn't put it in the index for sure. So again, no guessing. Or the redirect to a 404 page. Also, no guessing. So if you can make something more solid, why wouldn't you, especially if it's a really, really small amount of code that you have to write to make that happen? Um, if you're OK with the risk of potentially ending up with something in search results that is a 404 page, go for it. But then don't complain to us later. There are solutions for this that make it clear that the page shouldn't be in the index. So you can use them or you can not use them. That's fine. Most four, uh, soft 404s are being caught. but. I know at least one example uh, in the recent past where that didn't work. And then people were like, why is this showing up in search? It's an error page. And I'm like, you're not telling us it's an error page. You're actually not even saying the word error anywhere on the page. You're just showing uh, unrelated things. So hmm. um, so yeah, you, you can not implement that, but then you, you live with it a little bit of risk. Cool. So those were the YouTube questions. Thank you so much for submitting. I hope the answers were helpful. If not, you can totally ask follow-up questions in the next week's edition. And I see that we have a bunch of people here in the audience. And I wonder if the audience has questions as well. Uh, hi, this is Gayatri. 
and I joined a bit late. So my question That's was okay. about dynamic rendering. So I, I think I missed that part. Can you just go through that again, please? Uh, my name is Gayatri Sampat. Did, did you ask a question on, on YouTube? Yes. Why am I not seeing it? Then let me see. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. So I see you. You ask how to join the session, and then I'm not seeing your question. Could you ask your question again? Okay. Just give me one minute. Why am I not seeing the question? You search for. Top. Yeah, actually, so the issue was that uh, we have we are using React JS for our website, and mm -hmm. the navigation bar links they're not showing up as links in the Google Search Console. When I do a live touch and when I see the view crawl page, I don't see the live link. It's just uh, dumped as a chunk of text. So mm -hmm. uh, so we got back to the developers team, and they told us the dynamic rendering is in place, and you don't have to worry about this. But I'm just concerned that if the link juice of the main domain won't be passed on to the uh, navigation bar categories or the content silos and then on to the individual pages. So I wanted to confirm with you if uh, dynamic rendering is in place for our website. So how do I confirm that if it has been implemented properly and it doesn't hurt our SEO? That's a good question. Um, it depends a little bit on the uh, dynamic rendering solution that you have in place. Uh, if it's Rendertron, Rendertron adds an HTTP response header to a page that it rendered. I can actually probably show this. Uh, give me a second. Um, I need a new Chrome tab for this. And then I need a Rendertron instance. OK. Uh, so if you are using Rendertron, which I don't know if you do, um, and you don't have to. There's other solutions. I'm not saying that this is the right solution. I'm just saying like this is one where it's relatively easy to spot what's happening. Um, let's see. I think this needs to be HTTP. So if I render and serialize this page, and I get a this is now a um, this is now a dynamically rendered page, and I can tell because if I go into the network tab, and I'll actually make this larger real quick that people can actually read what's happening in here. If I load this again, I get the headers. And the response headers contain an X renderer Rendertron header. So Rendertron makes it quite easy to see if it has been used or not. If you would see that um, in, the, in the response headers in Search Console, then you would know that Rendertron was used. If not, it's relatively easy as well. Um, you can go to, let's say, the mobile friendly, or actually the rich result. Ah, I just go to go for the mobile friendly test. Um, if you were going to the mobile friendly test, and I, oh my, my screen is still too large for for the actual windows that I put on top of it. Um, you would look into the rendered HTML. So what makes me nervous is that you say like you don't see the links in the rendered HTML. That yes, is I... great. Into the layout again. Ah, yeah. Anyone having a question? Silence. Now is your time. Oh, actually, I do have one more follow-up question on that. Sure. Uh, don't uh, header bar links have more uh, priority than footer links? Or like footer links, footer links carry low weightage right, when it comes to Google, just like forum links or things like that? It usually doesn't matter that much. OK. The answer is, as usual, it depends. But normally, it doesn't have that much of a. It's not something that I would invest a lot of time in. OK, good. Awesome. Is there any issues with using web workers to process something quite large in the background and then spit that data back? Oh, boy, I feared this question would come. Uh, yes, I did a test on web workers. And I noticed that we are not perfect when it comes to, that's an understatement. We 
are not talking as much about web workers yet, uh, because I think it's a fantastic technique to actually offload um, like heavy work to the background, to a separate thread, basically. But I noticed that uh, Googlebot isn't dealing perfectly fine with it yet. We are working on that, but um, currently there are certain limitations. I tested uh, what happens if you do an asynchronous uh, communication flow with a web worker. So basically, like I asked the web worker load something for me, then it asynchronously loads something and then comes back later. That doesn't seem to work reliably in Googlebot at the time of this meetup uh, or, or this, this recording. Um, this will hopefully change in the in the future soon, but as at this point we don't have guidance on web workers yet, uh, because we hope to fix that rather soon. But we'll see. Um, there are other things with higher priority at this point because web workers are a relatively exotic feature on the web platform still. But we would love it to be less exotic because I think it's a great way of offloading work from the main thread. But yeah. be be very careful and test that very carefully. Uh, because there are very clearly limitations, especially when the uh, worker does something asynchronously. Right. OK. Thank you. That's a really good question. Wow, holy, holy moly, so, so many interesting questions. I also saw a question from, from Rina now that I apparently missed earlier. JavaScript-based site using Angular, 10K URLs, which is the most important content on the site, and have good interlinking, but still not even a single page is indexed. Looks like these pages don't exist for Googlebot. Even in the log file, I don't find these URLs. However, the URLs can be indexed per live test um, and the other tools. Well, the, the 41 request, that doesn't say much. Um, but I'm wondering what happens if I throw this into the tools. Uh, it is So is there is there a status uh, in, in Search Console like, discovered but not indexed? Or um, are we waiting for the crawl queue to do things? Or what's what's the background on these? Let's see. Right, so this is more of a first indexed. We did crawl this, but we're saying this is non-canonical. That's interesting. OK, let's run this through the mobile-friendly test. I'm sorry. So if I run this through here, because it is possible that we are not seeing something, it is possible that there is a caching issue. Um, None of these things would necessarily surprise me. Ah! Why can't I just get a link from any of these tools? Everyone has some sort of redirector in here. OK. Uh, when I look at it, hmm. OK, let me share my screen, because I, I think Rena is or was in this was in this Hangout, so she no longer is. That's unfortunate. Um, I'll, I'll show it anyways, hoping that she sees the recording. So if I share this tab, you should be seeing my screen in a moment. I think you see my screen now. I'm not so sure. Uh, the layout doesn't help. Let me actually change the layout real quick for a spotlight, and then hopefully my screen is showing up. Yeah, we can yeah. see. It. I can see that. Awesome. So here we see the slash watch slash movies is the header and the loading spinner. And I'm not sure what would I see if I would go to that website directly, movies slash watch. I'm pretty sure I wouldn't see just the loading spinner. I'm actually seeing just a loading spinner. So that isn't great. Uh, but okay, right. So we see a we see a loading spinner here. 
if I go to the main page, I see the same. No, now I actually see content. That's great. OK, so this page does load a bunch of content. Um, and was it movies watch, or what, did I get that wrong? Watch slash movies. Watch slash movies. OK, let's, let's see. Interesting. Right. So watch slash movies. Uh huh. Well, okay. So we're we're not seeing that. But um, if we look at what we are seeing here, we see the header and the loading spinner. That's what we see in the mobile friendly test for the URL slash watch slash movies. And if I test the main domain, I see a header and a spinner. So as far as Googlebot is in, involved or is, is concerned, uh, we are seeing two similar pages, which means we are dub eliminating one for the other. And um, if I were to judge, uh, there's, uh, you're trying to use a service worker. Maybe that's failing somehow. So I would definitely like debug this with your developers, because that's not something that you would want, I would say. Good. And then there was a question in the chat, I believe. Yes, one easy question. JavaScript used for accordions, is that a problem to access behind uh, the content behind the, for instance, the info? Um, generally, no. Uh, as long as it is in the in the DOM, then we should not have a problem or inherently have a problem uh, accessing this. Ah, you're back. Okay. Hi. I just I just had a look at your website. Do you hear us? Hello? Rina? Because we hear you. Hmm. All right. Uh, going back to the to the question with the Sky URL. Um, hi. Hello. Aha. Do you hear us, Rina? Hello. Yes, Hello. we do hear you. Hi. Hi. Yes. Hello. Do you hear us? Am yes, I audible? We do hear you. Sorry, I miss 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 the and not a problem. Part. You are you are in luck. Uh, I still have it open, so I can show with you what the problem uh, seems to be. Give me a second. I just need to like reorganize my windows and also the layout. Uh, I'll present the Chrome tab. I think it's this one. Yeah. Um. So. Okay. So uh, basically. Uh, OK, so our problem is a. Uh, Hello, yes. We still hear you. Hello. Hi. You know, we, we could still hear you in, initially. I'm not sure. Now we don't hear you anymore. Huh. OK, OK, so I start now. Uh, so basically, our problem is uh, we do have a majorly movies content, right? But it's still not even a single uh, URL is indexed in Google. However, the things look fine with the uh, movie test and all. So uh, this is the uh, directory page only. I mean, it's a subfolder. Watch movies. There are uh, multiple movies, a dedica dedicated page for the movies. This is not a particular yeah. movie page. Ah, right, OK. But uh, the thing is, so this URL, watch movies, is showing us a spinner, no content here. There's only like the the main uh, navigation, and then there's like the spinner here. No, no, no. It, it's not already. Yeah. But but that's that's what I'm seeing here. That's that's what Google bot yeah, sees. Yeah, because the, right? Wait, let me see. Yeah, that, can you open the live site? Uh yes. Um. No, no, no. Yeah. Like this. Watch slash movies. 
Hmm. Well, actually, I, I'm just going to click on slash movies. So this is your live site, right? Yeah, so uh, click on any of the movies like uh, one day. Th uh, this is the uh, actual movie page. That was a sub folder only. OK, then let me have a look. Come on. Come on. Ah. Uh. Loads forever. Sorry for that. Yeah, that looks good. That looks like we have a bunch of content. That's pretty nice. OK, so. Um, if we have seen this URL, let me check. Da, 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 da. 17 days ago. Mm -hmm. Indeed, we're not we're not knowing about this URL yet for some reason. Uh, interesting. But yeah. these URLs are not indexed. Even in the lo log details, I don't find any movie URL. That's an interesting question. Um, it looks like we have discovered it from the sitemap, uh, but it doesn't look like we have done the rest of this. So let's see what is what is here. Do we do we see this properly? So slash movies is indexed. That one we know. That one we have in the index. But then this one, which is clearly linked, we haven't. And this happens uh, mm -hmm. for the entire site. Only we do have a one particular section, which is an episode uh, that comes. Sorry? Yeah, but sitemap is already mm -hmm. submitted in the place. and And even uh, URLs are not uh, crawled, only discoveries there, discovered but not caught. Mm -hmm. No, uh, any other error is there. Right. Um, I don't know why that is, but I can try to find out why we are not crawling these. I'm pretty sure I can have a look at why this is happening. Um, I don't have an answer to that from the top of my Yeah. Head. Awesome. OK. Slash movie, slash TV, slash music. So that, yeah, the content so the, under that exactly. particular folder is not. Yeah. So so all of these main pages are indexed, but none of the sub pages are indexed yet. And I don't know why either. OK, I'll have to have a look at this um, because I don't know from the top of my head. Yeah, so there is definitely a link here. Copy link address. Do we know about this URL? Have we discovered the URL would be the real question. And if we have discovered the URL, why have we not? OK, interesting. We haven't even discovered this URL. All right, I'll have a look at what's going on here. Uh, if it's a problem on our side, then we have to fix it. If not, then I would probably respond in the um, on Twitter or something. Uh, if, you, if you ping me on, on Twitter publicly, then I can potentially say something about like, well, there is a problem with this and that. But it looks like we should be able to find this. OK, interesting. Um, coming back to the original question of the Sky Accordion, I'll try out the URL that you have given me here in the chat, uh, Ferhat. 
and I'll see what we see when we go to that page. Because theoretically, it's not a problem to have a um, to have an accordion. Wait, where is the accordion to begin with? So you said, e.g. info. Ah, that's like a tab thing, not really an accordion, is it? Well, yeah, no, no, it's an accordion. You're right. Um, so if I take this into one of our testing tools, like the mobile friendly test, I really need to get rid of this overscan issue. I say that every week and then I still don't do it because I'm so busy with other things. I'm too busy to actually fix the overscan problem. So for accordions or any UI element, it's not a problem if the content is invisible. Uh, it should just be in the DOM. Uh, if it's in the DOM, we can discover it and work with it. If it's only injected upon user gesture, there was an earlier question. It was like, we have a menu that only is inserted into the DOM when you click on the button. Googlebot doesn't click, so Googlebot didn't see the button. Uh, actually, didn't didn't click the button and didn't see the, the content that was injected. Now I need to figure out content that was hidden in the damn in the um, in the accordion. So if I click on info, Grenzgebiet ist ihr Revier. I'm getting the German version. Sorry for that. Then. Yeah, it does show up. It's in the DOM, so we can see it, and we can potentially index it as well. So that's not an issue. Any other questions while we are here? Uh, Martin, I do have a question about structured data, but it's off topic. Can I ask it here? Sure. I mean, no one else is asking questions, so go for it. <laughs> OK. So actually, we have a fairly big website, which has around like thousands of pages. And we're looking to implement a structured data markup. So uh, I understand that uh, the organizational level of structured data can be implemented in the headers for uh, across all the pages of the, of the website. But if I have to do it for individual pages or categories, such as articles or blog content or news or contests, do I have to go to each page uh, manually and uh, add the structured data for each of them in the first leg of implementation? Or is there a better way to do it? So Instead optimally, of, yeah. optimally, your um, CMS does help you with that in some way, because your CMS should know what kind of page each page is. Uh, if your CMS does not have any support, then you can maybe talk to your CMS provider or to your developers. Because hypothetically, developers should be able to, to make decisions based on, a, on the type of page and then programmatically add the structured data markup. That should be the easiest way to do. Um, there is a possibility that you can do it with Google Tag Manager if you're really, really careful. But that is more brittle than implementing it into your site through your own developers or through the CMS. So if you really cannot make changes to your own code, then maybe try to figure out a programmatic way of detecting which kind of page it is and then where to pull the data for the structured data types. But I would advise against it unless you really, really have to. OK, so even even with this implementation, is it can it be done for the existing pages as well? Sure, sure. OK, okay. got it. And then I have one more question. It's about uh, adding uh, review ratings in Google organic search. So recently, in September 2019, Google uh, said that it is no longer going to publish reviews for organizations and local businesses. So with that, uh, do we, can you still add reviews and give Google the possibility of displaying it when it organically searches for it instead of us prompting for it. And if we do that, do we have to enter the review manually every time it changes, or does it pull automatically from Google My Business account or something like that? I don't know. I don't know about Google My Business, and I don't know the policies behind structured data. Okay. So that's, okay. I don't know. OK, got it. Thank you. Thank you so much, Martin. You're welcome. Yeah. All right. Sometimes people are still submitting questions via YouTube. Let's check if we have additional comments. No, not today. Any further questions? Audience questions invited.
No one? All right. If there are no further questions, I would say. Uh, Martin, hi, it's me, Ferhat. Hi. Just one simple question. Uh, question. Um, <clears throat> you told us uh, that when everything is in the DOM, then uh, this should be not a problem. But uh, can this an, have an effect uh, on SEO when content is behind uh, tabs or accordion at that case? Or so what you do shouldn't. You think? You shouldn't hide your primary content behind a user interaction. Like if it's if if no, you consider that content to be like central and critical and important, then uh, I would suggest that you don't hide it behind a user interaction. But if you have your content behind a user interaction, it doesn't hurt. It doesn't make a make a big difference. I don't think we pull such content in for the description snippet. Uh, so okay. if we decide to rewrite your description, we wouldn't use content that is hidden on the page. But I don't think it hurts big time. Again, okay, make right. your make your primary content visible immediately. That's that's my biggest uh, suggestion. Okay, at that case, uh, um, all content behind the info, right? If that's the content you really care okay. about, then yes. Yeah, OK. Thank awesome. you. You're yeah. welcome. Matthew. You're welcome. More questions? Oh, there is a, that's a URL. Uh, only this kind of URLs are indexed. Oh, you're facing an internet issue. OK, that's unfortunate. Uh, yeah, so as I said, for the for your page, I would have to check what's happening there, why we are not um, seeing these things. Uh, I can't answer on the spot for these things, um, as the URL seems to be fine. And I'm not sure why we wouldn't see the, the linked URLs. Um, that requires me to make sure that it's not something on our end. It might be something on your end, but I can't tell you what without looking at it and seeing the reason as to why we're not seeing something specifically. Um, other questions? Wait, where was so many windows? There are no further questions. Then I would like to say thank you very, very much for joining this week's JavaScript SEO office hours. And uh, check out your, our YouTube channel to see when the next ones are announced. I'll probably announce them pretty much right now so that people can post their questions there. Um, they will be recorded as well. I'll put up the recording hopefully soonish, I guess like maybe Thursday, maybe Friday. Uh, and um, yeah. Keep being amazing. Stay healthy. Stay safe. Thank you very much for joining. Have a fantastic time. Bye bye. Thank you so much. You too, Martin. You're welcome. Bye bye. 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 bye.